here with Dr. Samuel Jackson, an astronomer at the Open University. When people picture astronomers, they tend to imagine somebody staying up all night, looking through a telescope, discovering new stars and planets every week. But the reality is a little different. Can you talk us through some of the activities you do in a typical day? Yeah, so this idea of an astronomer going to a telescope, observing life, doesn't really happen as much these days. Um, telescopes tend to run themselves or we have dedicated technicians running them for us so we don't actually need to be there as much as we used to um, but nowadays we spend a lot of our time looking through archives of data so a lot of these telescopes running what we call survey mode so they're taking loads of observations and then people pick out the parts of the observations that they want that fit their research projects so that's what I spend a lot of time doing is trawling through these archives I uh, spend a lot of time in meetings with collaborators and mission scientists around the world trying to keep up to date with latest developments and also I spend a lot of time running simulations so trying to match our expectations with how we you know, anticipate these objects will behave and trying to match that up to the data we have. And this is all done during the day, you no longer have to stay up all night to be an astronomer. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. Uh, we do get the occasional opportunities to go to these telescopes and observe live, and that takes a bit of an adjustment now compared to the astronomers of old who would have been uh, very used to staying up all night. And is it mainly other astronomers that you work with, or do you work with a wide variety of people? Yeah, so I do work with a lot of other astronomers, people who study you know, planets around distant stars, for example. Um, but I also get to work with planetary scientists, so people studying uh, meteorites that have fallen to Earth in labs, or also other people who develop cameras to go up into space as well. And as part of my job, I get to do a lot of travel as well, so I get to meet people from all around the world, all different experiences, and I learn a lot from, from those people as well. And what kinds of equipment and technology do you work with? So, mostly, to do astronomy, you just need a laptop. Mine at the moment, um, has a graphics card in it, so something you would use normally to be able to run high-end games, for example. But these are really good at doing lots of mathematical calculations all at once. So I use these to offload a lot of the sort of grunt work within my simulations so they can sort of crunch through the mathematical operations very quickly to take the strain off the rest of the computer. We also have a cluster here at the Open University, so this is essentially a very large and complicated computer that allows many people to run lots of high-end jobs all at once, and we're able to, you know, submit thousands of jobs to this cluster, and it queues them up and sort of crunches through them as fast as possible as well. Those who are studying astronomy at the moment may be learning the coding language Python. Mm -hmm. How often do you use Python in your job? Pretty much every day. Um, Python, I would say, is the most common programming language in astronomy at the moment. So from data analysis, it has a lot of tools uh, like pandas to deal with um, large data sets. There are dedicated astronomy packages like AstroPy, which allow you to uh, analyze images that come off telescopes and do lots of other um, key things that we would do on a daily basis in astronomy and it kind of handles all the back-end stuff for you. Um, aside from Python as well, we use other languages but Python is really the, the bread and butter of the astronomy community at the moment. What other software packages do you work with? So I use a lot of image analysis tools, uh, so things like DS9 for just simply looking at images but tools like Astro Image J that OU undergrads will be uh, familiar with perhaps um, for more detailed analysis. Uh, we use a lot of databases, um, so we have this thing in astronomy called ADS which is essentially a collection of all the papers in astronomy, it's the sum of all our knowledge in astronomy and it's really useful for trying to find information out and we're really lucky to have it in astronomy because other fields don't have anything remotely that comes close to it. Um, so we use that um, a lot looking for also um, archive data sets, we use various other uh, databases for ground-based and space-based telescopes. What's your favourite part of being an astronomer? I would say the um, feeling that I get to contribute to something much bigger than myself, so whether it be contributing to a better understanding of our universe as a whole, or something as simple as in planetary defence, trying to 
understand how we can protect humanity from an extinction level event, for example. You know, it, it just feels like you're able to make a difference and astronomy really gives you that opportunity to do that. Amazing. What would you say is your least favourite part of being an astronomer? I would say it's probably the job insecurity. Um, so astronomy works on these funding cycles uh, where every few years you have to reapply for funding to keep your job. Um, it's quite important that people go into astronomy with their eyes open to that, that you may need to move around quite a lot. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, then um, the opportunities may dry up. Um, so it can be hi quite hard to settle down somewhere, for example. Uh, but for some people, that's exactly what they want. They want a new challenge every few years to be able to move somewhere new and exciting and fresh. Um, but it's just important to keep it in mind when you go into astronomy. What would you recommend for someone who's interested in astronomy um, as to how they can get into the industry? I would say making sure you're brushed up on the programming knowledge um, and data analysis in particular. Those are the sort of underlying skills that you need in astronomy. Um, the, obviously you need the knowledge, the subject specific knowledge, the background behind it. Um, but these, these key skills I really think set you on a good foundation for a career in astronomy. Um, so doing that as part of your degree and learning it further, say as part of the PhD, will really help you get into astronomy. And is there any difference between how you imagined the job would be and what it actually is like? I think there's a lot more reading um, compared to what I expected. I'm not someone who read up um, a lot as a kid. I didn't you know, sit uh, in the evenings reading a lot of books. So I wasn't so used to just sitting down and just trawling through pages on pages. Um, and that kind of shocked me first coming into, into the field because um, you, you really need to keep up um, with what's going on in astronomy as you, as you progress because there's so many people doing such amazing things around the world and it can be a bit overwhelming to try and uh, catch up with all of it in one go so trying to keep on top of it as you go is quite important. Could you give us a little tour of your working environment? Well, to be honest, it's just a desk, um, so it's so it's not that interesting. Um, but we do have an observatory on campus, and uh, maybe we could go have a look around there. Sounds good. So I'm here in the George A. Bell Observatory, which is an observatory that we have on campus here at the Open University. Here I have a 16-inch optical telescope, and this puts it in the small aperture telescope category, uh, which means we don't do so much research with it these days. Um, it's mainly used by local astronomical societies and in training for postgraduate research students. So we have the option on this telescope of either looking through the eyepiece at various celestial phenomena, or we can use this camera here, which is a slightly old but still scientific grade CCD camera that we can attach to the end of this telescope here to take images of the night sky. And this telescope has been used for studying exoplanets, asteroids, comets, you name it, it's observed it. And this has enabled it to contribute a lot to the understanding of our solar system and uh, objects further beyond. So now we're outside with the Arrow Radio Telescope. So this telescope is a three meter uh, telescope and OU undergrads can use this to study the structure of the Milky Way. But radio telescopes like this can also be used to study things like uh, extra, extra galactic jets, which are uh, fast high energetic events in the universe that emit at radio wavelengths.